Hi guys, it is Citri here again uh, with tutorial 5 in my series of advanced runecraft tutorials. Today uh, I will be looking at pressure sensors and how you can link them up to a teleport rune. I'm running buckets, a beta bucket build uh, with 1.8 as uh, the official version, uh, the recommended build isn't out yet and neither has runecraft been updated so a lot of the new, any new features that come out for rune, uh, runecraft in the next build, uh, I don't have those yet. So my first step after having activated that old teleport rune is I will be digging out a pit for my pressure plate. Schematic you can find on the wiki. I'm just going to hook that up, uh, hook up the pressure sensor first because it occurs to me if I hook up the automation first it could be you know, difficult. So the subject of this tutorial uh, was requested by Bitter Destruction, who wanted to know about pressure sensor rooms, and uh, I always wanted to see what I could do with that. So the uh, the practical usage of this, I came up with that idea a while ago. I just get to play with it just now for this tutorial. Let's fill in the gap here. Yeah. Some iron. Now the signature I think I'll use uh, will be good old standby or four cobblestone automation signature, not the teleport signature. Yeah, drop that down there. And I need tier blocks in the corners here. I'm gonna use torches, tier three. I don't I still don't know the range um per tier of these automation sensors, but I'm going to guess that pressure plates and Damage sensors have the same range per tier thing. Yep, there we go. Um, yes. Now, because I don't yet have um, automation set up to this one here, I will need to go and make an automation designator for that. So I will just go and do that. And now I've got some more iron. Just setting up the automation designation room here. Place that down here. Enchant. Interesting lighting glitch there. And this block here. And there we go. That's the automation designation working right there. This teleport rune linking to waypoint one. Uh, it looks like uh, the pressure sensor only activates when someone's standing on the inner three blocks. That's so. That's a, a three by three section where you can capture anyone who stands there. If I can sprint over it. Apparently not. The thing about this rune is that you can take off the upper layer and the rune will still function. You can cover it with half steps or uh, fallen snow and the rune will still function. Ah, oh, can I... There you go, there's the redstone. And uh, if you want to stop this pressure plate from teleporting someone. Just like with the damage sensors, you damage the room and it doesn't function. I do believe it should be pro oh no, guess not. Damaging any part of the room appears to break it, except for the top layer. And that includes the tier materials, so you're gonna have to leave your blocks in there. If you're wanting to be able to toggle your pressure sensor off and on, you can use what I'm thinking of as a, a, a deadbolt. Uh, using the pistons here to stop your teleport room from working. Uh, because a deadbolt is basically just a lock that is either on or off that you control. Um, in this particular case, I will be using pistons in the four corner spots of the rune. Um, when their piston heads are extended, then uh, the shape is warped and runecraft does not process it as a teleport rune because they're not it's not tier zero that's in the corner, so it refuses to work there. And that will allow you to disable your rune and do some work on your pressure pad without it teleporting you. So using my D4, I'm going to head all the way back to my old castle, uh, where there's a monster spawner. Yes, it does appear to be raining indoors. 
uh, Minecraft. So wonderful. The monster spawner is deep underground, and I'll just take this rails down there to go visit it. You can probably guess where this is going. This is where, this is where the fun starts. I will hook up the monster spawner's output to a teleport rune and pressure sensor, so that instead of getting burned and their items harvested, they get teleported to where I want them to. So the first step of this is to sort of shut down the spawner. It, it already is off using glowstone and pistons, um, just because it's good to be able to turn them off t uh, so you can do maintenance. And I know it's not the best of designs, it's quite old. Um, it does do the basics, and I will be building a new one for 1.9, that is the plan. So here we are in the grinder, I'm going to drop in two cobblestone here to cut off the lava flow, prevent me getting horribly burned whilst building this, and and I'll put in some blocks here to seal off the shaft, yeah, the input channels. And I'm going to quickly throw up a pressure sensor directly in the floor of the grinders, uh, where the monsters come in for that. Diggy, diggy, diggy. Put a lid on this because um, even though uh, there is glowstone locking, it, it isn't perfect. And I have had monsters get processed through this. So I really don't want a creeper dropping on my head whilst building this. I'm um, going to go with the signature of four cobblestone, um, just because it's an easy one to remember. This is just going to be in the floor here where the monsters drop down onto. Yeah. Now, trying this with a uh, tier 3 block, the jack o' lanterns here, did not work. And it uh, took me a while to work it out, but the problem is due to the range of tier 3 blocks in this pressure sensor. It's not enough. Uh, I tried it with tier 3 and with tier 4 before giving up and going and fetching 4 diamond blocks and that was a success. Um, still don't know the ranges, I will do some experiments at some point and work it out. Uh, this is with the diamond blocks in, going to test it, uh, the only way it is practical. Open up the lid here, you can see the diamond below, ready for me, and drop. And we are inside my receiving cage. A quick cut to me inside the monster spawner. I've just turned it on. Here they come. Definitely not going to hang around here. Time to get out of here. And... Uh, yep, there they go. Successful mob, mob teleportation. Hooked up to my monster spawner. I could send that to anyone's waypoint in the entire world. So guys, thank you for watching tutorial 5, which has been about pressure sensors, yourself, and mobs. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you have any further questions or feedback, please leave a comment. I always read all the comments. Uh, if you want to see more of these tutorials, by all means subscribe, that's always appreciated. And if you have any requests for specific things, I like to address those as well, because I can usually learn something as well as sharing that. So thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time. Thank you.